Hey, Matt. It's Marco. Hey, go on. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Lee Zen is going to take over the uh, Clang Tidy issue or I should uh, still try to take a stab at it. Um, definitely new to Basil, so I'm um, um, I think he, f I think he has a PR that ac actually fixes it. Did you see his his fix PR? I no, I missed that one. I guess I'll, I'll go take a look. Yeah, let, let me let me find it. I can drop it in the chat one sec. Yeah, um, one thing that would be helpful with his fix PR, I'm guessing for the last few months we've had quite a bit of regressions. So if you're able to actually run it locally and you want to fix some of the master regressions, that would be really useful. Uh, hold on, let me, let me find it. Yep, I can definitely do that. Yeah, it was really unfortunate when that broke. Uh, let me see, where is it? Uh, here it is. Let me drop it in the chat. Thank you. This is our first 5 p.m. slot time, so I'm not sure who's going to show up for this one, although it looks like we have quite a few. Pretty light East Coast, but uh, I yeah. wouldn't expect any folks from here. Oh, hey, Alyssa. Hey there. Yeah, for some reason, Zoom wasn't working. I restarted enough things to get it going. Looks like we got one thing on the agenda. Was that you, Harvey, with the external yeah, is that, dependencies? Is that my rant? Yeah. OK. Um, All right. Um, yeah. Yes. Please, please add to the agenda if anyone has anything I else. To I don't know if there's anything else. I did get this really cool spreadsheet from Michael Payne, which has all did of our I? dependencies. Yes, I, uh, I, I actually uh, edited that a little bit. And uh, yeah, it looks good. I think it's a really nice contribution. Um, I think the idea is what I spoke with Michael about is that we would annotate repository locations.bzl with the uh, where the dependencies are being used. And that will be sort of essentially just metadata, which will be used by folks who are doing these updates in future. And that will obviously appear in the diff in GitHub to let us sort of get a better picture of, you know, how important this dependency update is. And if we can ideally like group these uh, bumps so that, you know, we can just deal with, oh yeah, all those build time ones and test ones, just get them out of the way. And we can focus on like those dependencies, which are actually really interesting for Envoy's behavioral and security properties. Yeah. Um, did he, did he make this by hand or is this yeah. done with a script? Yeah, I think, I think he built it by hand. It's really cool though. Is it, I mean, I'm assuming we could, probably make this with a script right because like that would well, be optimal. Well, once we have those annotations yeah we'll be able to build that with a script could we go even further and actually for extensions could we break apart that repositories.bzl file and actually have the extensions define the repositories that they need because that would be even more explicit in terms of being able to look through and say yeah. that and an extension uses a thing, right? Because like I'm, I'm looking at a bunch of these and a lot of these I know for sure are only used by a particular sure, extension. Like, yeah, obviously HTTP JSON transcoder, I'm using an extension of the thrift stuff. Same. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, I feel that would actually be a really huge improvement to the build process. If we could use the, in particular, if we could condition the build so that we're not even pulling down these repositories. Um, if you haven't yeah. actually completed in your build, um, these extensions. I think um, that probably yeah, works though build. already, right? Like doesn't Basil, wouldn't Basil already do that? Yeah, it's probably already doing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, you're right. right. <laughs> but it, it just um, seems like it would be a little more explicit because then we wouldn't have to keep the mapping up to date in that single file with what extensions actually use them but I'm not sure what's possible. Um, the, the, yeah, the thing is if we scatter this file across the tree, I mean, anything's, it doesn't really matter. Like with tooling, we could, all, we could always do this, but it'll be nice. It's nice having a single pane. I would like to maintain some sort of single pane of repositories and be able to easily query that. Yeah, I think that's yeah. fine. I mean, I, I think if there's just some way that whether it's through Bazel or some other script, 
like I feel like through Bazel, we should be able to know all of the code that uses a, a particular target, right? Like, doesn't Bazel query do that? So I mean, yeah, it seems like we should be able to query. run a qu yeah. query. Yeah, that can yeah. yeah, with Bazel query, we could do something like that. Um, I, I mean, again, like I think I'm, th I'm thinking of a tool which is a little more sophisticated, which actually includes this metadata and prints things out nicely and associates them with extension and. Yeah, I, th I think we would ultimately need something a bit more about Bazel Query. The Bazel Query is a building block for whatever you would build. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm, I, I guess I was just saying that I think whatever we um, should do, we should try to make it part of CI so that, for example, like if a new piece of code uses like an external dependency that we didn't know that, that it uses, like we should make sure that the annotations are actually up to, up to date. Like if it's done by hand, yeah, yeah. that seems very fragile. No, I, I agree. I mean, right now, the, 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 the thing that's done by hand is making clear whether this is data playing a build or test. And I don't think we can, we can possibly infer some of that through Basil magic, but uh, it's, that's probably not too fragile. Like, you know, Basilisk is never going to appear as part of the data plane, for example. And yeah, rapid JSON may come with the data plane some of the time, maybe control plane the others. But there's relatively few external dependencies which straddle that line. And I think those ones we can maintain by hand. Um, so like that aspect of tagging, I think that metadata can be done by hand, but association with extensions certainly is, is best done through tooling. Yeah, this, this list is actually not quite as bad as I had thought. Like, I mean, I, I had thought that it would be worse. I'm just like, I'm just browsing through. Is this spreadsheet public? Is it? I'm okay to sure. share it. I, I'm not sure. You have to check with Michael. I, I mean, I mean, I mean there's nothing secret. I wouldn't, but um, you know, just courtesy to check with someone, perhaps. Okay. Well, I just put, yeah. I just put it in. I'm, okay. not, I'm not sure. I mean, there's there's nothing in here that's secret. Okay. So, but I don't know if if it's open or not. So yeah. Um, so yeah. So anyway, I think we can do adding a lot more. And then another thing I would like to see sort of added is something as an acronym I just learned about today, but maybe our good friends at uh, Red Hat, like Kevin, who's on the local will know about this. It's a CPE. So apparently like all software has like its own unique identifier, just like CVEs uniquely identify exploits or vulnerabilities. CPEs uniquely identify products. So if we could include the CPEs for external dependencies there, that would be a huge solid favor for at least us at Google. And I'm sure other folks would love to have that information uh, as tagged uh, along because it uh, allows you to then map back from like they say the version and that CPE uh, to, um, you know, known vulnerabilities and that kind of thing. Sorry, what, what is a CPE? It's like a unique ID identifier, which for a piece of software. So like Envoy would have a CPE. At a, at a particular version or? or yeah, the, oh. yeah the, the CPE, the full CPE string includes version, but you can, I think that like, there are variants where you can like, you know, truncate it and still reason about that CPE. But like if we, so is this the reason that we eventually want to only use versions? So like we would say that all of our dependencies should have a CPE assigned or, yeah. or is the SHA in GitHub good enough for a CPE because that's a, that's a firm version in time? I, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not an expert yet on the CPE rules. I, I just learned about this acronym today. So um, what, what I think though is the, um, ultimate goal is to get to the point where we can just start reasoning about the security history and status of all of our dependencies. And that would be a desirable property. Again, not so important for stuff like Basilisk, um, but pretty important for things like um, NGHDB2 or Cell or any of these like dependencies that we have, which uh, play a role in the data plane. And um, right now we're in this situation, which is my agenda item, where we have a whole bunch of dependencies which are just like, yeah, this is some like random repository maintained by a couple of people and there's no release process and we just hit some SHA there. And that doesn't really facilitate this kind of like reasoning, um, in particular as we scale the number of dependencies. Ideally, this, is, this can be done in a tool-based way or through, you know, standard notification mechanisms like GitHub um, release 
um, our w w watches and GitHub releases, this kind of thing. So this is kind of where I would like us to get towards. Um, in a, and I think the way we can get this maturity is, is first of all, by being pretty skeptical about new external repositories, which don't match this. Like if you're coming along with a, you know, your own external repository library to help you out with your filter and that filter, well, you should really go and uh, make sure that, uh, uh, that there's some sort of sort of rele uh, release maturity uh, that's being practiced. And uh, I mean, we could take this even further and, and ask for, you know, well, you should have like a security policy and all these kinds of things. But the very least, like table stakes, is being able to cut releases and have a version history and be able to reason about what happened between two ver uh, two releases like to me i can't i can't think of anything more basic than that and it's true if you just want to work on a rolling master as release candidate you could do something like that with the right version history and so on but i don't think many projects really practice that either so yeah this is kind of like where i would propose we go at least for those dependencies which are actually important to uh data plane behavior yeah i, I mean this sounds fantastic i i i think that anything we do here would improve the security posture. My only concern is what I put into the GitHub issue, which is just that I want to make sure that if we specify these rules or what we expect from other projects, you know, they actually make sense and they're not just arbitrary because it's like we can, we can go to some of these people and be like, we want you to cut releases. And then they just go into GitHub and like press the button and then they, t you know, and then they tell us that they cut a release and it's like, it doesn't change anything. Again, if, if, if all they did was cut releases and maintained a version history between them, that to me is already very useful in being able to start to reason about um, uh, history and being able to, you know, and, and assuming they don't just put through bar in the version history. I mean, you know, we want them to actually, you know, have, have a um, actively maintained version history which represents things like security. Right. Matches and so, so on. I am, I am a hundred percent for this. I just want to make sure that if we do this, um, we apply this across all projects. And by that, I mean that we have a bunch of Google projects here and Google's yeah. used to working for master. And, and, and like, again, I mean, I think this is great, but if we're going to apply this, like we can't say that Google projects don't have to do this because they're used to going for master or something like that. No, I think a lot of the good, it's only the small, much smaller Google projects, which are in that category thing is like, I don't know, the Jot authentication or the yep. basically places where we've told people to uh, go cut a separate repository because we don't want to put in the main Envoy one. And that's basically where they are. And I think it would be nice if, the, if, if we could get something a bit more solid going on there. Agreed. Um, and then there are some major ones, which I think Quartz, uh, Quartz, Quartz take an action item to do a better job on with Cell and, and, and others like that. And, you know, Cell was kind of like, yeah, it existed internally at Google, and then we just decided to open source it. And I don't think there's been much in the way of um, process or uh, that kind of thing added to that yet. Yeah, and again, that that sounds great. Like, I know that for some of these dependencies, without n naming names, I know that some of them have been put into other repos to avoid our uh, extensive code reviews. So, <laughs> which which kind of defeats the purpose of what we're trying to achieve. Um, so, uh, you know, like we, we should just make sure that we write down what our expectations yeah. actually are. I mean, one of the nice things is if we could uh, do what you said at the beginning and, and start to associate and um, directly the extensions with, um, the repositories is those repositories which don't have release maturity and we can tag that again it's a bit of metadata there we can then automatically enforce that hey you don't get to claim a secure you know one of these super secure postures because it turns out you you know you're not practicing you're not doing yeah. best practices there. and and there there is there is prior art here like there are um you know best practices badges for projects and and things like that. And this is actually, I put it in the issue, but it's something that has come up in the CNCF context mm -hmm. quite a bit because 
every project pretty much has this problem and it's even worse in other ecosystems like C++ isn't I actually think quite as bad just in the sense that there's fewer dependencies more software tends to be written either from standard library if you look at something like go it's basically like no JS. I mean, it's like these projects pull in literally like hundreds of nested dependencies. So keeping track of that is very complicated. But there, um, there is interest in trying to do better here. So insofar as some of the security folks in the CNCF context could help here, either with guidelines in terms of what we want to see from projects. Like, I feel like this is stuff that doesn't apply to just us. I mean, it, it applies to other projects Absolutely. also. Yeah, I mean, so you, um, do, do you have like dedicated folks in CNCF who are working on this or is this just like, you know, a, a, a polite chat about security? No. so. There is something called SIG security in CNCF. There are people that focus on both the security projects and just general security posture for the CNCF ecosystem. I doubt about this issue and I was told to basically open an, an issue against SIG security. And one of the things that we might consider doing is you or I or both of us, we can go potentially present or talk about it at a SIG security meeting, just to explain some of the problems that, that were happening and maybe see, I mean, I, I, and again, I, I don't know that we're gonna get anything useful out of that, but given the fact that a lot of what we're talking about is not really Envoy specific, it's just dependency maturity and like dependency tracking and things yeah. like that. Um, it, it seems to me that there's a lot of common stuff here. Cool, cool. Yeah, so let me, I, it's it's on my to-do. Um, I will open that issue and I'll make sure that you're tagged and then maybe we can get a meeting slot and we can at least go talk to them. Sounds good to me. Cool. Yeah, but but in terms of near-term stuff, I mean, I, I love the idea of getting this spreadsheet like built into some tool that's actually checked in CI and like we can make sure that the, that the annotations are correct on the extensions. And at least then it would allow us to understand like what do we depend on? What is it used by? You can imagine that now that we have all these annotations around, you know, is an extension like alpha? What is the extension security posture? Like maybe we have different rules around, you know, what we require from, from depths. You know, it's like if, if they're in the core extension or they're trusted for, for untrusted data, like maybe they have to have a different posture. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think that'd be great. So yeah, um, hopefully uh, we'll, I think Michael's next, pl next plan is to take that spreadsheet and uh, at least add some, t turn it into metadata and we'll see from there what we can do. Sweet, yeah, that so sounds I great. But I think that, that, that's all I had to say um, on, on, on that topic. Uh, so, yeah. Cool. Um, I don't think I had anything else. Did, it, did anyone have anything that they wanted to chat about? Going once? No? Anyone? All right. Have a good evening. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.